first, let's bring in former Harvard Medical School professor and founder of the university's cancer and HIV AIDS research departments, Dr. William Hazeltine. He recently returned from Wuhan, where he chaired the U.S.-China Health Summit. Doctor, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, it's far too premature to consider reopening, not just in New York, but anywhere in the country. We need to see what's going to happen before we take measures. And I ought to say something else. If you compare what we're doing here in the United States to what China has done to control its epidemic, we are deficient. Even in the most extreme case, which is New York or California, we're not doing even a fraction of what China did to control its epidemic. We're not doing even a fraction of what China did to control its epidemic. What should we be doing, especially in New York City? And um, if you could speak directly to President Trump, what would you tell him? Uh, I think if you look at what we should be doing, and is that anybody who's been in contact with someone who is known to be infected should be put in mandatory quarantine in an isolated hotel room for up to 14 days from time of contact. That is how the Chinese stopped their epidemic. That is how the Chinese stopped their epidemic. Uh, I've uh, done an interview with an American who flew from Frankfurt to Shanghai. Two days later, he was told to come downstairs with his wife, and for the next 11 days, they were in isolated, separate hotel rooms, not allowed to open the door. They were served with hazmat-clad uh, workers every day for their food, and uh, until they passed the 11 days with no symptoms. That's what we need to do. That is what we're not doing. That's what we need to do. That is what we're not doing. Even the lockdown, the so-called lockdown, is not a lockdown. In New York City, you don't have to necessarily have had contact with an infected person, but simply if you're a resident of New York City, that if you were to leave the city, you should self-quarantine for up to 14 days. Is that a wise decision? It's a very wise decision. And in fact, that's one of the things that the China did and does. If you're moving from one part of China to another, you are asked to stay in self-isolation for up to 14 days. If you go come in from outside the country and you go to Beijing, you are uh, what's called home quarantine, not even allowed to open the door to your apartment. You have to be in that apartment and have food delivered to you. Uh, so it's a very wise measure uh, to control the spread of the infection. New York is a hot spot. It's not a cold, it's not a runny nose, it's a high fever and a dry cough. And people with those symptoms have got to be able to get tested and tested quickly. You don't want to test everybody with a cold. You're going to burn through your reagents and test kits and you're going to flood your system. You really want to focus it on those key uh, symptoms. Test them quickly and then know whether or not they have to be isolated. Find out who their close contacts are because 5 to 10% of those are going to get the disease as well. And, that's, and uh, the Director General of WHO went out with that number yesterday. Yesterday, because what he was seeing and what really alarmed him, Donna, was that people were cherry picking the lowest number they could find in the lowest context they could find. And they're saying, oh, we're like that. And that's a really dangerous assumption. Because, for example, in China, what I was really impressed with was the sophistication of the system. They've gotten really good at keeping people alive who get this disease long enough to be able to get their lung functions back. But when you look at the rough numbers, it's still an alarming number. And look at places like Italy and other that have gotten recently infected. Some of them have high mortality rates that are over 1%, 2%. Canada is ramping up preparations. What do you make of Canada's response? It's impressive. You know, you've been preparing for this for the last, you know, 15, 20 years since the SARS outbreak in Toronto, but even before that, since you put in place a universal health coverage system. So people don't, there aren't big barriers to people getting rapidly tested and rapidly treated. But clearly as well, after SARS, you built a public health care system that knows how to find cases, investigate them, follow their contacts and manage them properly. Do you think it's too much or inappropriate for countries to do worst case scenario planning? You, you have to plan uh, for, for worst case scenarios and, you know, you plan for all case scenarios. So in this disease, you want to know and you want to tell your population, here's what we're going to do if we have individual cases. Here's what we're going to do if we start having clusters. Here's what we're going to do if we have widespread community transmission, because you have to bring your population with you. They're the key. It is not the Public Health Agency of Canada that's going to stop COVID. It's going to be the population of Canada working as a surveillance system, you know, washing their hands and rapidly detecting and notifying. And, and and working with the uh, the system, but it, this and that was the big thing in China. You know, people ask me what's the big message. They they believe it's a societal duty to to work together against common threats like this, and it's very very impressive. 
remember, these countries that are getting infected now is have a month and a half to get ready for this, right? Um, the Chinese provinces had two weeks. They moved fast. And what I saw in China, Donna, was um, when I left, I was talking to the governors and mayors as their cases were dropping. And so they have dropping cases and they were buying ventilators, building new hospital beds because they wanted to be ready if this came back. And then I come back to Europe and people are asking the question, do we need to buy ventilators? Do we need to build beds as their cases are going up? It's such a different mentality. So your message to those countries is to get with it and get on with it. Get ready. Be fast. Dr. Aylward from the World Health Organization, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us. We're not doing even a fraction of what China did to control its epidemic. We're not doing even a fraction of what China did to control its epidemic. That is how the Chinese stopped their epidemic. That is how the Chinese stopped their epidemic. That's what we need to do. That is what we're not doing. Even the lockdown, the so-called lockdown, is not a lockdown.